Creativity is easier for some and harder for others, but like most things, it's a muscle that if exercised, you will get better and better. So speaking of muscle, we will flex that creativity today and explore 10 different ways to reflavor your totem warrior barbarian. Taking the animal totem aesthetic and reskinning it to something completely different to create a unique aspect for your next character or NPC. Hello Acolytes, welcome to the Cleric Corner. My name is Riker, and here we talk about all things Dungeons and Dragons, tapping into our higher powers to create worlds more unique and stories more impactful. But first, our sponsor for today's video, Villainous Champions of the Shadow Keep, a complete campaign setting that lets you play not only an evil character, but the BBEG itself, complete with guides to build and maintain your own secret lair to keep wandering good adventurers out of your business. Whether it be Thieves Guild, Dark Cult, or a group of rebels, guard your treasures and secret artifacts with maze-like halls to populate with triggers and traps. Then hire henchmen or minions to help kill off the those pesky adventurers. If that's not all, you will also find rules to play different races and classes, including the Beast Man race or the two-headed ogre that is actually played by two players instead of one. Subclasses include the Black Paladin wielding dark forces or the Soul Shifter that can change their body by possessing a new one. Back the project on Kickstarter live now until December 10th. Now before we explore how we will make the Totem Warrior Barbarian into a Demon Slayer or a Psychic Monk, what does the subclass actually do? It begins by giving you the spells Beast Sense and Speak with Animals as ritual spells, and then gives you a choice of animal spirits, each giving you a different ability depending on which one that you choose. The bear to resist all damage, the eagle to dash as a bonus action and avoid opportunity attacks, elk to increase your walking speed, tiger to add your jump distance, and wolf to give your friends pack tactics. At level 6 you are able to choose again from this list, but getting different features and choosing a different animal if you want, bear to increase your carrying capacity and strength checks, eagle to see up to a mile away, elk to increase your travel pace, and tiger for proficiency in a couple extra skills, and wolf to track and sneak at a faster pace. The next feature gives you the commune with nature spell and then your last feature gives you a choice between totems again. This time the bear forces disadvantage on attacks against your allies, eagle gives you limited flight speed, elk allows you to trample enemies into being prone, tiger gives you an extra bonus action attack, and wolf helps you knock your enemies prone when you hit them. With the concept that I like to call the constellation, we take the flavor from the circle of the stars druid. Instead of of animal spirits, they are constellations. Even animal constellations that you invoke when you rage. Your form could even resemble some of these starry forms just as the stars druid does. Channel the power of the horoscopes or astrology. Something like taking Leo as your rising sign and Scorpio as your moon when you level up. I don't know, I'm not an expert on this sort of thing, but I assume it might be fun to figure out which totem might elicit the personalities of different signs. Of course, your beast sense and speak with animals and commune with nature could be more of divination magic or consulting a star chart, or asking the beast the exact time and place that they were born. And then another class might give us flavor inspiration with the Invoker, a barbarian that receives patron gifts instead of spiritual guidance. Each of these abilities they choose at each level are warlock invocations. Not literally, but flavor it as such. You get it. But this adding a unique possible warlocky style backstory and a patron without having to multi-class. Instead of Devil Sight, you get Eagle Sight. Could even be from a Fae patron if you want, if you wanted to keep the animal flavor still. But of course your Beast Sense and Speak with Animals could also be you reading their mind with Eldritch Power from your patron blessing. Or your patron could just possess them and then tell you what they know. Your commune with nature could then be your patron communicating with you as well. With the historian, we actually get a peek into what an intelligence focused barbarian might look like as far as flavor goes. A barbarian that pours over books and scrolls to read about former warriors and their fighting styles. Instead of the wolf and elk totem, you copy the skills of Margoth the Conqueror or Eranor the Brave, or even real life figures like Attila the Hun. What warriors were known for their perseverance, speed, skills, or strength? Your beast sense and speak with animals coming from another warrior that had those skills. Or commune with nature instead being you reading through tomes about the area. But you could also be poring over these books for religious reasons, looking for guidance and boons from gods. 
instead of collecting totems, you are actually collecting holy symbols, getting resistance to fire damage from Mistra, God of Magic, or a flight speed from Bahamut, the Dragon of Law. A God of Nature, of course, giving you boons to speak with animals and commune with nature, or some God of Divination that would do the same. But that leads us now to more of a wisdom-focused barbarian with the mind over matter. Pushing your body to overcome pain and run faster than any other man is no easy feat but it can be made easier with psionics and meditation, using your brain power to push your boundaries and become faster or see farther. Psionics in previous editions did a lot. Telekinesis, telepathy, charm and influence and other magic. You could even take feats like telekinesis or telepathy to aid this character concept. Read the minds of beasts that you talk to or expand your mental awareness to commune with nature. On the topic of taking from other classes, you may choose to flavor this a lot like the monk, where instead of a rage, it's more like a trance or a meditative state, which I actually talked more about in my main barbarian video. Or along the lines of your will pushing the boundaries, you may also try to flavor this like a paladin, empowering yourself with oaths. And each time you choose the totem spirit, you are adopting a new tenant to your oath. This resolve empowering your drive and ambition to your cause. But taking different skills in different places is very iconic for fantasy TTRPGs and even fantasy video games. Perks, feats, skills, abilities, whatever you like to call them, as you gain experience and gain access to special choices to customize your character. So in the same way, we have the skill tree. Your totem spirit options acting in the same way that a skill tree works. What do you want to be better at now, and what do you want to be better at later? Instead of the names of bear or tiger, you just look at it as a dexterity power-up or a perception boon, reflaving your character any other way that you like. If you have a really kind DM, maybe they will even allow you to forgo an ability upgrade at level 6 to instead grab a second ability upgrade at the third level options. The more levels that you grow, the more options that are available to you in the pool. But speaking of upgrades, I am actually looking for a couple more helpers to improve this channel's content creation. Every month, me and my team create a monthly magazine on a variety of topics to stretch the brain and improve the flavor of your games. Character charts, role tables, brain activities, and more. So we are in need of writers, storytellers, and creators of all kinds. If you're interested, the specifics are on my Discord linked below in the description and outlined in the Scriptorium channels. No previous credentials needed, I just can't wait to create together. If you do want a copy of this month's magazine, All About Weather, you can also get that through my Patreon or my website, all linked down in the description as well. But let's get back to it. When it comes to fantasy, anything is possible. And when our fantasy characters have fantasies, it's even more potent. With the Dreamer, we also have the ability to alter their reality in small ways. Let's say in dreams, we can run faster, jump higher, take on a different persona, or even fly. This barbarian channels the magic of the dream realm to alter their abilities as such. If they can dream it, they can do it. Instead of rage, they might even fall asleep or be in a dream-like trance, not unlike Zenitsu from Demon Slayer becoming more powerful in this trance. Your beast sense and speak with animals can come to you in the form of dreams or dreamlike sequences, as well as your commune with nature spells. As an added note, it could be dreams or it could be nightmares, and you may not want to channel those things from the plane of dreams. You're faster not to run into something, but run from it. Speaking of scary things though, why do the totems you take have to be animals? With the monster, your totems can come from creatures like dragons or fairies or both. Your movement from an elk totem is instead a quickling totem. Your sight from an eagle totem is instead a beholder totem. And the fun thing about the totem warrior barbarian is that you can take on physical aspects of the totem creature that you take. So give yourself an eye stock or give yourself bluish skin. If you wanted more of a giant aesthetic, each totem choice could instead be a giant rune of rune magic, activating these runes when you rage. You could get these monster totems as normal, or they could be because you share a bloodline or even as your favorite enemy, like the ranger class. You could gain these abilities not because you like them, but because you study them. But let's get back to the bloodline thing for a minute with the nurtured. We get a barbarian who gets these abilities because of who raised them. This could be either nature or nurture, for those of you familiar with the social argument, where these totemic abilities could come from either yourself, where your bloodline comes from the creature, or you were raised by them. 
And a simple example of this is if you are an Aarakocra, you gain the eagle totem simply because of your racial nature. Or you could be an orc raised by an Aarakocra, getting eagle totems because of your racial nurture. Your tiger abilities from tabaxi parents, wolf from werewolf parents, or you could even have an elk race in your world and them get their abilities from their elk parents. Or you could just say that your features come from a dwarven heritage and reflavor them that way possibly just as an extension of your other racial features. But many features of a given person can also be cultural, being a result of the culture that they grew up in. So with the house, this barbarian gets their skills from growing up in a noble house or certain faction. Much like the Eberron campaign setting, these houses are broken up by dragon marks. While one house is great at herding livestock and animal husbandry, another is great at stealth, intrigue, and assassinations. Depending on the totem you take as a barbarian, it could just be a skill that you learned or perceived through being a part of this familial group. Maybe even being a part of a noble house with the crest depicting a bear, a wolf, or a tiger. Or to make things just a little bit silly, maybe be a part of a Delta Sigma Theta or Alpha Zeta, sorority houses that give you perks for being a part of their group or whatever group patron that might sponsor your adventuring by giving you these perks. But on the more reverent side of things, some households in some cultures do revere a deity or spirit. So with the Guardian, we look to inspiration from cultures around the world. In Chinese culture, you can often find guardian spirits or household deities, entities that watch over the home in general. Mushu from Mulan was technically one of these spirits, and you could even argue the cricket. Also called tutelary deities, they are also a spirit or guardian of a specific place, geographic feature, person, lineage, or occupation, among others. Like demons guarding Thai temples or sphinxes guarding the Great Pyramids. So if you really wanted to bring your own unique quasi-deity into your D&D game, here is your chance. Channel these deities of a house or community to also give a familial touch to a barbarian and bring a totem of this guardian spirit with you. But that is only a few of the plethora of imaginings for your next character. If you like this video, make sure to hit the like button. These subclass explorations have been performing unfortunately worse and worse in the YouTube algorithm, so I don't know if I will continue to do them much longer. But as always, if enough people like the video, maybe we can change that. Check out my other creative subclass videos here, but in the meantime, go out there and spread the good word of D&D and make the world a better place, both on and off the table. See you in the next one.